compassion has been matched by their generosity. In the West, the image of Muslim women is one of subservience and passivity. Well, our speaker tonight, Roshan Ezafar, she defines that conventional stereotype. Fifteen years ago, she was inspired by Muhammad Yavidis' uh, vision of Rameen Bank. And with him, as a mentor, she set up the Cars Foundation. That has been a long road, and she's going to give you the presentation tonight, and also, really, her work is, is very inspirational. So we're honored that Zaha has come all the way from Lahore to join us this evening to talk about women in Pakistan and her work with them, and she will answer questions after her presentation. So over to you. I left my job at the World Bank and I 
write email to them and say, talk to us. I'm not employed. What should I do with my life? So in response, three days later, PIA, the local Pakistan International Airlines office called me, as it is now part of that time, called me and said, Madam, you have a ticket to Dhaka by somebody called Muhammad Yunus. I nearly fell over my seat. I was like, wow, what's going on? So I called him up and he said, well, if you really want to learn about microfinance and its miracles come to Dhaka. So I spent in 1994 10 weeks in Dhaka traversing the length and breadth of Bangladesh, learning about microfinance. So that is how my journey began. Today I'm going to talk to you about the business case of investing in women. Why is it so important today? Why the imperative hangs in front of us? I'll tell you something else about microfinance. Microfinance is about realizing a dream. And I'd like to share that dream with you. A dream which relegates poverty, misogyny, and discrimination against women in New Zealand. I believe one day we will live in a world devoid of poverty, of discrimination against women, of misogyny and misogyny. That is what microfinance allows us to do. And we believe as microbankers that that is possible. So let's look at the uh, The content of my uh, presentation will look at the evidence of investing in women. And we are going to look at very hard facts to understand why it is important. We will then look at the softer side. How come there are barriers to women's economic participation across the world? Then we will look at why we started Gush and the many stories that I'd like to share with you about it and the pro-women uh, and gender-friendly products that we came up with. And then I'd like to talk to you to, about the other side of microfinance, which is savings. And lastly, some of the challenges that are in involving women's, part, uh, in, in, uh, women's participation in microfinance. So let's look at some of the statistics. Today, there is a low participation of women in the economy, and that has a high loss for families in society. If we estimate that, for every 10% decline in women development indicators in a country, you lose an annual GDP of 0.7%. So imagine if countries that are lagging behind on what are now called the Millennium Development Goals began to value their people, began to value human dignity, you would start seeing a 0.7% increase in their GDP overall. We we'll also see that women's low participation in the economy creates a, not only an economic burden but a social burden on families. There are less earners to go around, there's less money to go around. I often ask audiences, how would it feel if you had one dollar in your pocket and you have to spend the day? When I have interns who come and work with me, I actually give them one dollar. I give them 80 rupees and I say, okay, you are going to spend one day on that and then come back to me and tell me how 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 do you feel. So the the it's not just about the economic side of, of poverty, but it's also about the social side. And when you live in that constant uh, state of vulnerability, it really affects your uh, psychology as well. We also see that low participation of women creates lost opportunities. Today, 70% of the world's poor are women. It is what economists call the terrorization of poverty. So there is a huge opportunity, if we look at it being as a class half full, there is a huge opportunity to get economic gains in developing countries if we begin to invest in them. Let's look at regional data. What's happening in female and male labor participation rates across the world? If we see the MENA region, which is Middle East and North Africa, it has some of the lowest uh, participation rates of females, which is then followed by South Asia and Latin America, and Sub-Saharan Africa and East Asia do a little better. We do understand that the East Asian economies have, in fact, uh, pretty much an equivalent female participation rate vis-a-vis uh, -vis male, males as well. So let's try and understand what impacts on the participation, the economic mainstreaming of women in society? There are some, several barriers to women's participation in the economy. Um, simply put, it, it involves limits on mobility and lack of access to markets. In terms of women in a lot of societies being denied access to uh, not just markets, but simply not being allowed to uh, leave their homes. 